Glass Joe is tied with Gabby J. Yay. For the most prolific career in the entire Punch-Out! series, sharing a record of 99 losses and one win. A few weeks ago, a viewer asked me if I could make a video about Glass Joe's one win. I'm sorry I didn't save the comment and now it's lost in the mishmash of all the other comments on my other videos, but you remember who you are. And this was something that I had never really thought about. In Punch-Out, the records were always something that I always just kind of glossed over. But if you really think about it, there has never been a bigger bum in the history of boxing than Glass Joe. You know, he's the guy they put in Punch-Out so that an absolute beginner can get used to playing the game. You have to really, really try to lose to Glass Joe. Or, you know, be one of these kids. He's gassed. Dodge the right way. Or Mike Tyson himself. I couldn't even be Glass. I couldn't be Glass Joe. Although, granted, Mike Tyson did get his win back. The point is, for Glass Joe to even have a single victory, there have to be some really exceptional circumstances. It's clear that Nintendo put that win in there for a reason, but who is it against? What seems like the obvious answer at first would be the win is probably against Gabby J. Yay! Funny thing is, Gabby J actually has one victory of his own. Let's read about it. Born in Paris, Gabby J originally was a waiter at a small cafe near the Eiffel Tower. However, one day, something snapped, and he felt the need to become a professional boxer. After graduating from the Glass Joe Boxing School, by KOing Glass Joe his one win, he entered the professional circuit. So Glass Joe is so bad that he even got beaten by Gabby J. And that's not to say that Glass Joe couldn't have possibly gotten his win back, but it just doesn't seem that likely. Another theory about Glass Joe's single victory comes from the old Nintendo comics made by Valiant. In 1990 and 1991, Valiant Comics produced a series called Nintendo Comic System. In this series, there were four flagship titles. Super Mario, The Legend of Zelda, Game Boy, and Captain N the Game Master. In these books, sometimes they would have stories between the main stories featuring other Nintendo games. And one of these issues featured a Punch-Out! comic entitled The First Fight. This comic tells the story of how Little Mac came to meet Doc Lewis. After suffering what appears to be yet another loss, Little Mac gets told off by a promoter who tells him that he should just give up boxing. Doc Lewis interrupts this conversation and takes Little Mac under his wing. What makes this comic relevant to the mystery of who Glass Joe beat is that if we look at this panel, we see a boxer who very much looks to be Glass Joe knocking out Little Mac. And we get an even better look on the next page when Matt gets his comeuppance. And that'd justify the promoter's reaction in this comic. If you're so bad that you get beaten by Glass Joe giving him his first and only win, you're not cut out for this. But the thing about this is, like many of the Valiant comics, this story contradicts the established canon of the game. Because according to the official story of Punch-Out, Little Mac hadn't even started boxing until he came to meet Doc Lewis and begin his training. And the 0-0 record that Little Mac starts the game with corroborates this fact. If there had ever been an encounter between Little Mac and Glass Joe before the first Punch-Out game, it wasn't sanctioned by the WVBA. But there's another suspect who could potentially have been the person who Glass Joe beat, and that's where the story gets kind of complicated. In an issue of the official Nintendo magazine, one of the programmers for Punch-Out stated that Glass Joe's single victory came from Nick Bruiser. Nick Bruiser, of course, being the final opponent in Super Punch-Out. And Glass Joe, of course, doesn't appear in Super Punch-Out, so now we have lore that's spanning across the entire Punch-Out series. And that should be enough to settle it, right? We've got a Nintendo insider telling us that that victory came when Glass Joe somehow defeated Nick Bruiser, but it's more complicated than that. You see, despite the claim by the programmer that Glass Joe had beaten Nick Bruiser and that's where his one victory came from, if we look at Nick Bruiser's record, he has no losses. So let's take a moment to figure out where this discrepancy could come from. The first thing I had considered is that the Punch-Out games, they each feature a number of different circuits. It's possible that maybe different circuits had a different governing body. It would be strangely complicated for it to work out that way, but maybe one body recognizes the fight while another doesn't. But that's not the case, because if we look at every single circuit in the Punch-Out! series, they're all governed by the WVBA, or 
World Video Boxing Association. It's possible that maybe between Punch-Out and Super Punch-Out, the WVBA disavowed the fight, taking away Nick Bruiser's loss. Then, for some reason, between Super Punch-Out and Punch-Out Weed, they re it, and then all of a sudden Glass Joe has his win back. But that seems needlessly controversial, although I guess in a fight where something like that happened, maybe it would be an exceptionally controversial fight, but uh, I'm not sold on it. Another angle that I considered was maybe Super Punch-Out is a prequel and took place before Punch-Out. If that were the case, then in Super Punch-Out, Nick Bruiser could have his flawless record, lose to Glass Joe after that game, and then Glass Joe has his win in time for Punch-Out. That could also explain why Nick Bruiser never appears in another Punch-Out game, you know, that's a disgrace. It would also explain why Little Mac isn't in Super Punch-Out, because he hadn't trained to box yet. And I know there's some debate over whether or not your character in Super Punch-Out is Little Mac, but I think it's very clear that it's a different character. Even though there is some newer, at least in the English language, Language stuff, some newer material that refers to the women's Little Mac, it's clear that that wasn't intended. You can look at early screenshots of Super Punch-Out and see that originally it definitely was Little Mac and then for some reason they changed the design. It, that seems like it would be an odd choice to me, to make a character the same character despite deliberately making him look different. And then you have a developer for Punch-Out Wii who corroborates what I'm saying. We researched the entire series, and we realized that one of the main elements of the franchise was the story of Little Mac, and he doesn't appear in the Super Punch-Out! universe. We think that the connection between him and Doc Lewis, Max Trainer, was the core reason that the NES game was better received than its sequel Super Punch-Out!, but now I went off on a little bit of a tangent, and the thing about that theory is it doesn't exactly add up for reasons I'm about to show you. Although this theory would make the Little Mac thing make sense, and it would make Glass Joe's victory make sense, the other boxers' records contradict it. If we look at the records of the boxers who returned for Super Punch-Out, Sandman goes from two losses to three, Super Macho Man goes from zero losses to three, and Bald Bull goes from four losses to 19. What's going on, big guy? So if these returning boxers' records in mind, it's safe to throw out the prequel theory. But then I noticed a small detail in Super Punch-Out that got me thinking about a theory that can make all of this make sense. So when you win a match in Super Punch-Out, it gives you a record of all the times that the boxer got beaten at. In addition to whatever time you set, it'll also have times set by a bunch of imaginary people. When you beat Nick Bruiser for the first time, among these names will be... G. Joe. Clearly, this implies that Glass Joe beat Nick Bruiser. And obviously, I'm not saying that winning in a video game equates to getting a win added to your real-life boxing record. But what this did make me think of is a theory that makes it possible for Glass Joe to have his one victory in real life, real life, while Nick Bruiser still has a flawless record in Super Punch-Out. What if Super Punch-Out is a video game? What I mean by this, what if Super Punch-Out exists only as a video game within the greater Punch-Out universe? I mean, obviously if they want to imply that Glass Joe actually played the game and set a time, it does, but that also fixes the contradiction between his win and Nick Bruiser's perfect record. And then that, that gives us this timeline as I see it. At some indeterminate time between the original Punch-Out game, in these 100 bouts that Glass Joe has had, he'd managed to somehow beat Nick Bruiser. It is a WVBA sanction match, and it's some weird fluke, but he gets the win regardless. Obviously disgraced, Nick Bruiser never shows his face again in the WVBA, meaning we never see him in another Punch-Out game. Then Super Punch-Out, the video game, comes out, and Nick Bruiser is included, because, you know, he's a legend, he's Nick Bruiser, give him a flawless record. Glass Joe plays the game and sets a pretty good record. Or, you know, maybe someone over at Nintendo just made a mistake, but why would that ever happen? So there you go, Glass Joe's single victory comes against Nick Bruiser in a world in which Super Punch-Out is a game within a game, or maybe they're just wacky boxing games that exist in a vacuum and we shouldn't overthink their barely existent stories. But that's no fun. Anyway, if you like this video, check out this other mystery about Metroid. I'm out of here.
Welcome to my world!